we're here back talking about linearization and I really want to cover how it works and so that you really understand how linearization works and what you need to do to linearize a function. So we're going to review that again and I'm going to start out with just a function here and so here we just have an input of y and some function uh, f of y and what we want to do in our process is essentially we want to do three things. The first one we want to do is one is to find the equilibrium point. Point, okay, and in any system what this really means is we want to find where our function f of y equals zero. So f of y equals zero. So that's the first thing we need to do. And we do this because we want to linearize the function around this point. So in this one, it's pretty easy to visualize. f of y equals zero, find that point, here we are. And we'll generally call that point in control, we'll call that y, and I'll be using a little subscript e. So we put a little subscript E. It's the input that makes the total function zero. Okay, so we found that point. That's the first thing we need to do. The second thing kind of comes in two parts. Two and three are actually very related. Second thing we need to do is to recenter the axes for our function around the equilibrium point. So we're going to say center axes, axis, uh, at equilibrium. Yum. Okay, so we're going to center it at equilibrium. And the reason that we have to do this is because all of our linear functions have to go through zero. So if you recall from our linear and nonlinear discussion, a linear function always has to go through zero and essentially it's gonna look like a line of some sort going through the origin. This equation we need it to go through this point so this is the equilibrium so we need to center that on that point point. and the way that we do this is that we rename our axes so I covered this before but essentially what we do instead of having y here we define something called delta y so we say y is equal to whatever this equilibrium point was, or is, y, e, and then we're going to define our new axes based on here. So we're going to define a little delta y here. So this is equal to y, e, the equilibrium point, plus delta y. So all we're doing is changing our variables, we're moving our axes around the equilibrium point, and then calling our new variable delta y. And this is the perturbation signal. Okay, so that's the first thing that we do. And I guess the second thing. The third thing that we do now is to linearize non-linear. Oh, technically this not a dash usually. Non-linear um, components, we'll say. And this is where the Taylor series expansion comes in. Very important. So Taylor series expansion and I'm just going to write the generic form of that. So if you are not as familiar with this, you can go back to some other videos, some math videos that explain how the Taylor expansion works. I'm going to write the general form and then we're going to apply it to our function. So usually, they say f is equal to, I guess it's f of y, oh they use f of x, so, alright, so f a, a here in the, the general expression is the equilibrium point, or the point that you're linearizing around, so we'll call it equilibrium, equilib point. Spelling is not my strong point, sorry. All right, so 
then you have to take the first derivative, dt, of f evaluated at a, so that's the equilibrium point, right? And then you have x minus a, x being your normal variable, minus the equilibrium point over one factorial. And then you do the next term, you have the second derivative, dt squared of f a, evaluated a, and this time it's x minus a squared over two factorial, and this goes on infinitely, it's an infinite series, and if you have the full infinite, then it is equal to your original nonlinear uh, function here. For controls, we completely ignore anything above the first order, so first derivative. So ours is really an approximation of that. So what we're trying to do now is to define a new function, and because we're only looking at the first order, it will be a line. So we're essentially trying to make a linear approximate here. And before I called that f prime, some people got confused, so I'm just going to call this g this time. So this will be g of delta y. So this is our new function that we're approximating around the equilibrium point, and that will be a linear function. Okay, so let's try to apply this. So this we ignore. ignore. We've outlined the basic steps for linearization, and now let's take an example. So let's say that we have y double dot, double derivative, plus y one dot, first derivative, and we're going to make it equal to negative cosine of y. Okay, so to do this, now we need to first find the equilibrium point. Okay, so when we do that, we assume that the dynamics of the system are zero. So that means that y double dot or y dot are zero. If there's an input, we also assume that that's zero. In this case, um, this is a single variable, so we just assume these two are zero, which means, so if we do step one on the equilibrium, we would get negative cosine of y at the equilibrium is equal to zero. Okay, and if we think back to what our cosine graph looks like, a negative cosine, there would actually be multiple equilibrium points here, but we are going to assume, so here negative cosine would look like this, right, so we're actually gonna, we'll assume this equilibrium point, which is gonna be pi over two. Okay, so we're gonna say ye is equal to pi over two. So let's find the, um, let's linearize around this point, okay? So we found the equilibrium point, great. Next, now we need the center it around the equilibrium point. So really we're just saying, we're just plugging this value into here. So this is gonna be our next equation. So we look back at our equation and we say, well, okay, there's um, two different sides. Let's look at each side independently. So if we look at this, we actually see that the, the derivative components themselves are already linear. And if you don't believe me, then you have to go back to superposition. Let's do an example with this real quick. So let's say that EFG, we're going to make a new function, h. We're just going to call this h momentarily. So h of, I guess, y. So if we have h of y1 equals d dt squared of y1, and then we have h of y2 equals d squared dt of y2, so double derivative of both. If we add these together, so if we do, um, actually if we add y1 plus y2 and then put it into our function, so h of y1 plus y2 would be equal to derivative, double derivative, Mr. this squared here, would, of y1 plus y2, we know that we can distribute the derivative here, so we would end up with double derivative 
of both. which is equivalent to these two. So we get h of y1 plus h of y2. So if you got confused on, you know, this is already a linear function, this is superposition, you can go through and do the test for homogeneity, it will work out. So these derivatives are already linear functions. So we actually don't have to linearize this, this part because they're already linear. So all we have to do on this one is actually apply this equation, so our moving of the axes, to this side, and this part of the equation will already be linear. So if we do that, I'm gonna erase this. What we can do on the left side then is do, okay, well, uh, d dt squared, so double derivative, Instead of y now, we have y e minus dt, sorry, plus dt, delta, oh my, delta y. Look what I'm writing, sorry if I misspeak. And then we can do the same thing with this component. So the first derivative now of no longer y, but now y e plus dy, y e plus delta y. And then we're going to linearize that side later. If you look at this though, if you look at just this term, well we have ye, which is actually a constant value, right? It's not a variable, it's equilibrium value. So if we take the double derivative of a constant, it's zero. So this really just becomes our double derivative. Uh, I'm going to write shorthand, hope you guys are okay with that. Just the deriv double derivative of this, so we get two dots on top of this variable, delta y. The same thing happens here. The first derivative of a constant is zero, so we just get the dynamics, first derivative around delta y. So then we can do delta y and take the first derivative with time. So what we see is that really we took our original and we just were able to replace it with the delta y's because um, the derivatives of the constant of y e is zero. So this is already linear, and so we don't actually have to linearize it because it's already done. And now we can go to the other side and look at that. Here we see that this is not linear, this part. So we do need to linearize it using the Taylor series expansion. Okay, so let's do that. So let's remember what the Taylor expansion is here. And now let's try to, um, we'll bring these, put it back into our terms now. So we'll, we'll take the Taylor expansion of this just directly and see what happens. Well, first we need to take f of a. In this case, a is our equilibrium value. So we'll take um, cosine, negative cosine, of our equilibrium value. Okay, And we chose it to be zero, so here it will be pi over two, which will be zero. So this will go to zero. And that will always happen. If this does not go away, there's something wrong with your, your equilibrium value. So that's a good check. Next, we go to the next part. So we say, okay, well, we'll take the derivative of our function here and evaluate it at um, a, which is the equilibrium point. Okay, so derivative of cosine is negative sine, but we have two negatives, so we get sine of our ye again is pi over 2. And then, so that's f of a, derivative of f of a, and then we have this thing, so x minus a, and a is our ye. We see that if we rewrite this, we can write it as delta y is equal to y minus ye, which is the same as y minus a here. So we can actually directly put this delta y into there. So we're kind of, we're already, we're linearizing it and changing the axis at the same time. And then the one factorial is just one. So this is our equation. So we're almost there. This went to zero. We just need to find the sine of pi over two. If we think back to our, what a sine equation is, 
like that. Pi over 2 is going to be 1, so this will be 1, and we get 1 delta y. <laughs> so this would be our linearized version of this of our equation here. And this is one of the endpoints that you could say this is a full linearized version of our system at the equilibrium point. If this had inputs and outputs, then you could take the Laplace transform and figure out the transfer function. But in this example, we only did a single dimensional. So uh, we'll do look at some more using multivariable, but I'll stop here for now. I apologize that I fail at spelling because I spelled this completely wrong. It's equilibrium. Spelling's important. <laughs>